Now, do you feel like you're learning Excel techniques for the sake of learning Excel techniques? The fact are people are learning too much. They're trying to learn all the new stuff. So by understanding which formula are underrated and overrated, we can get you focusing on the things that you need to know. Let's get into this one. What is our first formula? Download the download file, work along with me. Well, XLOOKUP, let's have a look at our interface here. Is it gonna be overrated or underrated? XLOOKUP, one of the new Excel formulae, of course. Let's first appreciate what it does. So suppose in our data set, we want to look up the manager from the team name. We've got the team name in column E here. The manager is over in column B. Now, why is that a problem? Because we're trying to look up a column to the left of the column that contains our target value. That's not easily done with VLOOKUP. We could do index and match. We'll talk about those later. But XLOOKUP is a nice alternative. So let's go ahead, try it now. XLOOKUP, the lookup value, the value in this cell, comma, and then we want our lookup array. So where's the data, the column that we're going to uh, look up that value? And you can see I've typed it in there just using the keyboard shortcuts here. And then we want to go over to the manager cell here, uh, control shift and down on the Windows PC. Then we can close the formula. And we've got XLOOKUP working there. So I can see the manager of Great Dane. Where are they? The manager there is Rocky. Let's go ahead and prove this. Let's put Poodle in here. I can see the manager there is Charlie. So we get to do that lookup, a lookup to the left of our target column. But what's the big problem with XLOOKUP? What's kind of the elephant in the room with XLOOKUP? Well, perhaps you said to me, what's XLOOKUP? I don't have the formula on my system. This is the problem with XLOOKUP. It's not available. It's still not available on a lot of systems. If you want to really improve your career, move your career forward with Excel, other people have to use your Excel files, whether that's your friends, family, internal customers, external customers with people like me. We've got to be using stuff that people actually have. That's why for me, might be unpopular. XLOOKUP at the moment is, let's go back to the home sheet here. It's a little bit overrated because it's not available on everybody's systems. Before we move on to our second formula, which is the match formula, let me tell you briefly about my Excel cheat sheet. So if you like this critical approach to Excel practice, I've laid it out all for you, the 21 formulae, 13 techniques you need to know. You also get three exclusive videos in there, never released on YouTube about my Excel secret weapons. The link is in the video description below. Go ahead and get your Excel cheat sheet. Let's move on. So number two, we've got the match formula, a bit of an unsung hero for me in Excel. Maybe I'm giving you a bit of a clue. So let's go to our examples here. So let's use match and index now to do the job that XLOOKUP just did. So I'm saying XLOOKUP, I personally don't use because it's not available on people's systems yet. So how would you deal with that situation, Chris? Perhaps that's what you're asking. So let's go ahead and do the same function with two formulae that have been around in Excel for ages. And one is the match formula. So now I need to match uh, the team name into our lookup column. And then the third component there, we can just say zero for exact match. Now that's just gonna return a value. And this is perhaps why people don't think the match formula is very good. Just returns a number. Doesn't look very exciting, does it? Okay, header match. I'm just gonna go ahead and type this in for brevity. So here we want a value of, of one. And then we can go ahead and put our index formula in. So index here. We know with index, we have to specify an array, which is just a range of data. So I'm doing that now. And then we need a row number and a column number from within that range. So row number, well, that's going to be our team. And then column number, uh, row number rather, and then comma, and then column number just here. That's going to be our header match. That's going to bring us back the manager. So we can see that we've returned a value of Charlie. So what if I change Poodle? What have we got? Let's go to Labrador, something easy to type here. Typing in Labrador, and we can see we've got the same thing two different ways. Kuda the dog there, managing the Labrador team. The same thing two different ways, but how does this all happen? This all happens using the match formula, and the match formula works with other formulae, offset, VLOOKUP, many other formulae. It's like the Euro 2020 on at the moment. It's like the Ungolo Kante of the formula world. It's a great facilitator, does a lot of work for other people. That's why for me, the match formula is underrated. Are you going to add it to your Excel arsenal today? In the links in the uh, description below this video, I'll put links to all our videos about these formulae. So make sure you go ahead and check those out. So what's the next formula we're going to look at? Well, we're going to look at the 
index formula. Already looked at the index formula. Now, we just looked at an, example, at, a, at an example of how we can use index. We've got to specify a data range and then which row to look at, which column to look at, then index is going to return the value. That's pretty cool. It's a powerful formula. And you'll always hear people talking about match and index. And that's called, are you matching offset or matching index or X lookup? Guys, truth is, I'm an offset person. And I'm going to show you and convince you why in the next couple of minutes. I don't actually use index because this process you have to go through, this process of selecting the whole data range, you don't have to do that with offset. With offset, we can choose a single anchor cell. Let me tell you what I mean. So we're going to replace this index formula with offset now, typing in offset. So offset acts asks for a reference. Again, not absolutely clear, is it, what they mean? It means a single cell reference at the top in the top left corner of your data set. So I've just selected A4 there. And then it's similar to index. We need to say, how many rows down do we need to go? We've got our value of six there. That's going to take us six rows down to the sixth team. And then how many columns across? And I've selected the cell above there. So this gives us the same result. And once again, let's go ahead and prove it. I type in Dax Hunt here. How's my dog pronunciation? Not absolutely sure. And you can see we've returned a value of spot there. So the same result in two different ways. But I prefer offset because we don't have to specify the whole data set. So it's going to work better with dynamic data sets where you've got columns and rows being added, being deleted. Maybe yeah, offset's going to ha handle that better. But there's more with offset. There's more with offset because it can facilitate dynamic functions really nicely. So dynamic drop down menus, for example, and offset is huge in VBA, the offset method. So if you can understand it in the spreadsheet first, that's going to be helpful for these reasons. For these reasons, I think index is somewhat overrated and offset for me is underrated. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments. Let's have a discussion there. Let's go on to our next formula then, into our examples. We're going to talk about VLOOKUP now. So with VLOOKUP, we want to create a formula to look up the region from the team name. We've got a little table down here giving me the regions. So it's a simple task for VLOOKUP. Are you using the VLOOKUP formula already? Let's go full screen now for this demonstration. So VLOOKUP here, we want to get the region appearing in this column. We're going to extract it from the table I just showed to you. So the lookup value is the cell next door and then comma. Then we've got to go down to our table. So control shift right, control shift down here. Hit the F4 key. You can see we put the dollar signs in there. We need those dollar signs because we're going to pull this formula down. We want those references to be absolute. Then we want to get a value from the second column in the table. And we're using exact match just because we're max matching to text here. So Poodle has returned a value of West. And I can see in the, in the table, Poodle is West. That's good. And then control she holding down the shift key in the down arrow, control alt V and F is going to allow me to copy these formula down, Cocker Spaniel being north. And you can go ahead and check a few, few more, Greyhound being east. Was that problematic? Was that OK? Let's have a look. Greyhound being east. Yes. So if you look up, you know, we all love VLOOKUP. look up. We love how it allows us to look up from a table. But for me, this one's going to be controversial. If you look up, is it underrated? Is it overrated for me? It's just a bit overrated. That's because it's like everyone knows about VLOOKUP. It's like if you know about VLOOKUP, suddenly you're an advanced Excel user and people that really aspire to use it. That's great. And I don't want to deny my or anybody else's satisfaction and accomplishment from using a formula properly. But there's so many other formula guys. There's match. There's DSUM we're going to talk about. There's indirect. VLOOKUP for me just gets it's, it's overhyped, gets too much attention. So try testing out some of the other formula too. I've never quite understood, though it's really powerful, I've never quite understood the hype around VLOOKUP. Moving on now, next one, not quite a formula, admittedly, pivot tables. Hmm. Okay, let's go into our example set and pivot tables. So find the total points for the North region. So we've put those regions in, the total points for all of the teams in the North region. Let's do it first using a pivot table. So control shift right, control shift down. I recommend before you create a pivot table, you select the data, including, of course, including the column headers. Excel is going to need those to work out what we're doing. Insert tables and then pivot table. I'm going to put the pivot table on an existing worksheet. And you can see our table on range is pre-selected there. That's why I recommend 
pre-selecting the data, a uh, new worksheet rather than existing worksheet, of course. Then we hit OK, and we have our usual pivot table interface. So let's just go ahead and do it. What do we want? Well, we want region. I'm going to go ahead and tick region here. And then we want number of points. I'm going to go ahead, tick points. And you can see Excel sets up that table for us. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So where are we going to put pivot tables? That was such a quick analysis to, to, to create. Well, can you actually use pivot tables yourself? I would guess most of the people who are watching this video couldn't actually do that. They wouldn't be able to set up a pivot table. The truth is most people can't actually work very confidently with pivot tables, and they bring a lot of unnecessary infrastructure to the file. And I've argued this before in the, the reasons I don't use pivot tables video. The link is in the description below. And as I've gone through, the, through my career, because people aren't comfortable with them and because they're resource intensive, I've found alternatives to pivot tables. We're going to have a look in a second. So for me, sorry, this might trigger some people. You can argue with me in the comments. Pivot tables are overrated. We're going to have a look at my alternative in just a second. Let's also look at uh, subtotals. So let's suppose we wanted to do the same thing, find total points for North region using subtotal. Now, I always see people doing this with subtotal. I've spoken about it on the channel before. So we want to select, uh, select in this case, the points column. But before that, we want a function number. I'm going to go function number nine. Now, don't get me wrong. Subtotal is powerful. This function is just going to add up the filtered rows. So we can now go ahead, hit enter. At the moment, there's no filtering going on. So it's just adding up all the points. We can see at the bottom of the table, at the bottom of Excel there, 1,058. So let's go ahead, put the filters on, Alt-A-T here on the window, Windows PC. And then we want the north region. So I'm just clicking north, hitting OK, and we can see we've got 296. So is that consistent with our pivot table? So we can see 296 for the north region, two things, two different ways. So you might say, but Chris, subtotal is great. Look how, look, look how you did that. Well, I would say no, because there's different ways to do this. There's different ways to get the same result, and we're going to see in just a second the much leaner and meaner formula I use to do this kind of analysis. So. Sorry, subtotal fans, but for me, subtotal is overrated. We'll have a look at our alternative now. DSUM. Fans of the channel will know I love the DSUM formula. Let's look at it uh, in action here. Let's just go up to our subtotal formula, Alt AT. So I'm going to remove the filters now. And let's just use these rows, Alt HOH 15 here. Let's get some consistency in row height. So with DSUM, we set up a little table. I'm just going to set it up with one column here. I'm going to say, I'm going to say team name, and then we can just put. I'm going to say region rather because that's the that's the column that we're looking at. Region and the north here. So this is the column here, and this is the value that I want to pick out here. And then we just need to go D sum. I'm going to put it across here equals D sum. Open the bracket. My system struggling a little bit today. So database got this, all of the data. Control shift right. Control shift down. Field. So we can type in the name of the column here. So points are going in, in speech marks, yes, in speech marks, and then criteria. Well, now we need to select our criteria table, which I've just done. I'm using one criteria. You could use two, three, 10, 20 criteria if you wanted to, however many criteria you want. You might be saying to me, well, Chris, that took a long time to set up. It did take a bit of time to set up, but it's leaner and meaner than a pivot table. We don't have a table sitting around in the file. We don't have that interface sitting in the file. It also doesn't need filtering. We're going to see in just a second, we've got the same result, 296. Now it's really easy for me to change this value. You could have that supported by a drop-down menu. You might say to me, well, Chris, we can use slices with pivot tables. Yes, I like that idea, but it's again, it's a lot of stuff to have in the file. So my preferred approach, which is based on hundreds of projects over the years, is to use DSUM in this way. But are you even using DSUM? Do you even know about DSUM? It's an old and classic formula. And for me, it's underrated. Let's go to our final example here. So pivot tables, we've done the pivot tables indirect. So create a dynamic chart with points totals for top X teams. So suppose we want some analysis now, but we want to select the teams that we want to appear in the analysis. Now, this is my proposed solution. We'll talk about that in a second. Suppose you want to display 
the top five teams, the points totals for the top five teams or the top 10 teams, or maybe even all 20 teams, we can do that. Can you see how quick, smooth, slick that functionality is? How am I achieving that function? I'm going to show you in just a second. But typically, if people had to do this, you know, once again, might reach for a pivot chart if we were trying to, to produce that kind of column chart there. So let's do that. Select all the data. Then let's go to, we've got recommended charts here. Tables, I'm looking for pivot charts. There it is, pivot chart. Okay, insert pivot charts and then new worksheet here. And we've got our pivot chart in. So what do we want? We want team name. So team name going in there and then we want points. So clicking on points here. Okay, we managed to get a similar result here. And then if you just wanted to show a few, few teams, you can go ahead, put the filter on as I'm doing now, click on a few teams, whoever it might be, and you can see our pivot chart eventually is going to update there. Just there you felt it's not always that slick, is it, with pivot charts? So pivot chart, I actually wouldn't use that. Why is that? Because you can get brilliant dynamic functionality using simple formally using different options. What formula was it Was it that I used? It's one of Excel's most underrated formulae. I'm using the indirect formula and you can go ahead, download this and understand what's going on. But just briefly, if I go into the name manager here, Alt-MN, you can see we've got DIN labels and DIN series. And the chart is pointing to these named ranges. These named ranges are powered by indirect. And you can see the indirect can read a reference from a cell. It's reading this reference that I've built up using just a few formulae here. Download this example. How slick is this? I don't need a pivot table interface. No junk in the file. It's quick. It's slick. My customers love it. The people you're working with, I'm sure, are going to love it too. Let's give one final example because I'm sounding like a bit of an Excel dinosaur, aren't I? I'm saying you don't need the new stuff. Use DSUM. That's one of Excel's oldest formulae. One, one of the new formulae I do love is the unique formula, the unique formula. Let's go ahead and let's suppose I just wanted to get the unique values from this column. Well, I can use the unique formula here, open the brackets, control shift down, and then just hit enter. And the unique formula being one of these dynamic array formulae is going to spill over. So that's one example of when the new formula can really help. When would I use that? Well, I wouldn't send it to other people yet because they might not have an up-to-date version of Excel. But the new formula, when you use them for yourself, as a programmer in your own environment with your control and mastery of spreadsheets, it's good to use those new formulae, just less good, in my opinion, less good when you're sending the spreadsheet to other people. And as programmers, guys, as programmers, we want to be able surely for the impact of our work to spread. That's why we need to be understanding which formulae are overrated and which formulae we can actually use in our Excel work. The next video to watch is in the pinned comment uh, below this video. Go ahead and download my Excel cheat sheet. I've laid it out for you, all the stuff you need to know in Excel. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. I'll see you in the next.